In this tutorial we are installing an Ubuntu Linux server in the latest version 2104, but instead of Docker we are using Portman to containerize our applications and the Cockpit project, which is a nice graphical web interface so that you can easily and securely manage your entire Linux server. And of course we are also installing a reverse proxy to securely expose this with trusted SSL source. Hey everyone, this is Christian and I create tutorials and content for IT professionals. So if you want to learn more about containerization, Linux, DevOps processes and all this stuff, then please don't forget to hit the like button and of course subscribe to the channel. And if you're already following my channel here on YouTube, you probably know that I absolutely love Docker, right? It's a topic that I often cover on this channel and I don't think there's something necessarily bad about Docker, but it's always good to have some alternatives. And Portman is a very nice alternative to Docker because it basically just uses the same syntax and it also has some security advantages over Docker. If you want to learn more about it and more about the architecture behind Portman, then check out my video. I've made a comparison video between Docker and Portman, so check it out if you haven't already watched it. And of course you can also combine some parts of this tutorial, for example the cockpit project and also the reverse proxy setup with Docker as well. So just watch this video until the end because it's also very interesting if you want to learn more about how to manage and install and deploy Linux servers. And as always you don't need to remember any commands in this tutorial, just have a look at the video description below and click on the link to my written blog article, there you can read the full write up and just copy and paste all the templates or the commands. And before we start with installing any services, we need a new Linux server with Ubuntu in the latest version 2104. So let's first deploy it. And to quickly create a new Linux server in the latest Ubuntu version, I will just use my favorite cloud provider DigitalOcean. You can of course also use any other provider or install a virtual machine or install that anywhere else, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to try it out, then you will find a referral link in the description below where you get $100 for 60 days completely for free. So just use that, sign it up and it also helps my channel if you continue to use their services. Just to show you how easy it is on DigitalOcean to create a new Linux server, then just click on get started with a droplet and then you need to take care that you pick the latest version of Ubuntu. Note if you're running an existing server in version 20.04 i any older LTS version, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you to upgrade to the latest version, but you can still follow this tutorial with some minor exceptions. For example, the cockpit portman extension is not available natively in the LTS versions of Ubuntu. So it works best on the newer version, but you can still follow the most parts of this tutorial even with older versions of Ubuntu. But in our case let's just pick the newest version and I just want to deploy a more powerful server in the Frankfurt data center and I also deploy all my SSH keys. By the way I've also done a tutorial on private and public SSH key authentication. If you don't know how to securely authenticate to a Linux server then just check out this tutorial, put your link in the description below. And I want to call this cockpit testing and just deploy this server. It should be up in just one or two minutes. And what is also pretty nice because we want to obtain trusted SSL sorts later to use a reverse proxy to expose their server we also need a public DNS record that points to the IP address of this server. And what is pretty nice on DigitalOcean you can manage all your DNS records completely for free even after the trial period which is pretty nice. So let's go to networking domains and let's just add another A record for our fresh new installed server. And I will just call it cockpit and point it to the public IP address of our fresh new installed server. Let's create this record and we also want to copy the public IP address and just authenticate and go to the CLI. And first of all I always want to update all the packages that are installed on this server so just enter sudo apt update-y and also enter sudo apt upgrade to upgrade all the software packages. After a kernel update it's also recommended to reboot your server so just enter reboot now and just wait until the server is online again. And because I don't want to use the root user to do all the administrative work I would also recommend you to add a new administrative user to your Linux server and just use that to authenticate and do all the administrative work. So just add a new user with user add accept for example that's my favorite nickname. <laughs> just create home folders and set the default shell to bin bash and let's also add a comment admin user for example and also add this user with user mod dash ag to the group sudo 
and set a password for this user because we want to use this user to authenticate to our web interface with cockpit and that usually is done via username and password. We also want to create a new folder that is called .ssh for this user and copy the existing public key pairs that are deployed for the root user and copy this to the new administrative user location so we can actually use the same SSH keys to authenticate to it. So just copy the existing authorized key files to the new users.ssh folder hit enter and you need to take care that you also change the user permissions because we have created this file under the root user and we need to change the owner of this file to our new username and now we can just try to exit and re-authenticate with our new user so let's change from the root user to exit and you can see we are now authenticated we could now just use the sudo command to do any administrative work and if i write this command correctly it should work <laughs> okay so now we can start installing our services so to install Portman on the latest Ubuntu version 2104, it's very easy. So you just need to enter sudo app install Portman and it will just work. On any older Ubuntu versions, for example, the LTS versions and so on, you need to add the official repository of Portman first, but you can just go to the official documentation of Portman. So just go to the homepage portman.io getting started installation. And then you can look up all the installation instructions for any other Linux distributions and older versions of Ubuntu as well. So you need to just copy all these commands, enter it in the terminal, and it will also work on older versions. And to test if Portman is running correctly, we can now enter Portman double dash version, for example. You can see it's installed and we can now just start using Portman just like we would use Docker. So that's very, very nice. And although Linux servers are often managed via the terminal and the CLI, it's sometimes just nice to have a graphical web interface. For example, you can better see some metrics like CPU, memory utilization and do some other things as well. And therefore I'm using the cockpit project, which is such a nice graphical web interface to manage your entire Linux server. So it was originally developed for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, where it is also the default management tool, but it also is supported on other distributions as well. For example, Ubuntu. I've noticed that on the latest version 2104, it is even supported better because the official Portman extension for Cockpit is only existing in the latest Ubuntu version and not in the LTS version. So this is probably something that is a bit different, but you can still just use Cockpit and any other features except the Portman extension on the older LTS versions as well. So to install the cockpit project on an Ubuntu server, simply just type in sudo apt install cockpit. And if you're running 2104, you can also add cockpit portman, which will install the portman extension for cockpit. And once this is installed, we can check with sudo systemctl status cockpit. If the service is running correctly and you can see the web interface is running, we should now be able to connect our server. So we can now use a public IP address to connect to our server on port 9090 and you should see the web interface of cockpit. And let's authenticate with our new created user. Sometimes you need to wait a few minutes after cockpit has been installed because it's doing some signing requests with the SSL certs in the background. So just wait a few minutes, reload this page after some minutes, it will work. And now we can just use the cockpit project to manage our entire Linux server. It's a very nice application. I've done a separate video on this as well. Put your link in the description if you want to learn more about it. But what is new and I haven't covered in this tutorial is how to manage Portman containers with cockpit. So because we have installed Portman on our server and we have installed the Portman extensions, which is only working on Ubuntu 2104, we can just click on Portman containers and can actually manage all containers that are running on our system. But to be honest, guys, the cockpit portman extension is missing some very crucial features to manage containers. For example, if you have deployed some containers, you cannot edit these configuration files later. You always need to delete the container and redeploy it with a different configuration. And this is something that I don't like because it's existing in other management tools we have in Docker. For example, the portainer web interface, which is very, very awesome to manage Docker containers, but it's of course not working with the portman backend. So therefore I've searched for another tool to manage containers in a better and easier way and I found a tool that is called Portman Compose which is basically just a replacement of Docker Compose with a different backend implementation and this is also pretty nice because we can manage containers in static configuration files. So to install Portman Compose on our Linux server we need to just install the Python script and because I want to do this with a Python package manager pip I also want to first install this. So just enter sudo apt install python3 dash pip and after we have installed this we can use the pip3 install portman compose command. So note 
you should not use the sudo command in front of this when you're installing Python packages via pip, right? And once this is done, we can simply just use the command. If you type in portman compose, for example, you will see the command is not found. So we first need to add something to our environment variables. So just type in export path and this command here, you can just copy it from my tutorial. And because we want to make this a persistent setting, we also want to add it to our bash RC file that is existing in our personal home folder. So just enter this command in the end of this file. And if you re-authenticate, it should also be present here. So now we can manage containers with Podman, with Podman Compose. We have a nice web interface to manage our entire Linux server and maybe start and stop some containers, see some metrics. It's very, very nice. But one thing I also want to do is because some people have asked me in the comment section of my cockpit video, how to protect cockpit with a reverse proxy. I also want to do this and obtain trusted SSL certs to securely expose this web service. Because we only have a self-certificate for our existing copy installation, so note, the connection is always encrypted, but the certificate is invalid, you will always get an error. And to obtain trusted SSL certs and maybe use this reverse proxy to just deploy some other containers, for example, a web server or whatever, I want to use the Nginx proxy manager, which is a reverse proxy based on an Nginx web server. And it also comes with a nice graphical web interface where you can easily manage multiple domain names and forward this to different containers or applications or whatever. So this is really nice. If you want to learn more about this project, I also done some videos about the Nginx proxy manager of course, I will link them in the description below. Or you can just go to the official homepage, Nginx Proxy Manager, quick setup, and then you will get a Docker Compose file. You can, of course, now deploy with Portman Compose on our server. And we will use this application to obtain trusted SSL certs. What is also pretty nice is the Nginx Proxy Manager is taking care of auto-renewing our certificates. So this is also pretty nice to use that to just terminate the SSL connection and just forward this to different containers, applications, or whatever. So what we will do is we will deploy this application with Portman Compose. And because in the quick start guide, you will find this Docker Compose YAML file. We can just copy everything in here and let's create a new project folder in the OP key directory. And let's create a new folder that is called NPM for our Nginx proxy manager. And I also want to change the owner to our actual user. Just go to the NPM and just enter a new file. We need to call it Docker Compose because even the Portman Compose is always searching for a Docker Compose file here. And we want to copy everything inside here. So one thing that is a bit special about Portman Compose is if you have any persistent volumes that are mounted to folders inside your project directory, Portman Compose always expect that these folders are existing, otherwise it will quit with an error. So we first need to create these folders here, the data folder, the let's encrypt folder and the data MySQL folder for our persistent volumes that are mounted inside our containers. So let's just write this file and create some folders, the data folder, we need the let's, let's encrypt folder and we need the data slash MySQL folder. So now we could simply just start the container with portman compose up and we of course want to run it in the background. It will automatically search for any Docker Compose file that is existing in this folder here. And it will try to start and deploy the container. So I've missed two things here. So first of all, we are not finding this image here. And this is a bit special. I don't know why Podman is not automatically pulling these images from the Docker IO registry, but we need to enter this Docker Compose file again. And let's change two things here. So we need to define on which registry the Docker containers should be searched on. So we need to enter Docker IO slash and then Podman should also find these containers. And we also will get another error, but I'm just executing it again because I want to show this error to you and explain why this is happening. You will see this error message here. Rootless port cannot expose privileged port for, for free. And that is because we are not executing this with root users privileges, but if we want to expose any ports to the containers that are below 1024, we need to have root users privileges or we need to change the unprivileged ports to start with a different port number. So we will just copy this statement here and change it in the at etc sys ctl conf file and just add this at the bottom here. So add net ipv4 ip unprivileged port start and now we need to start with port 80 because we need port 80, 81 and 443 for the Nginx proxy manager. 
and we also need to reboot our server to make this setting active. And now we should see that our containers are up and running. So that will create a new pod where those two containers are automatically connected to each other. So in the Docker world, it is sometimes called a stack in Portainer or a compose file or whatever. In Podman, it's always called a pod that consists of multiple containers in something like a stack. You can also just use the cockpit project to see and manage our containers, but as I said, you cannot really edit anything in here. We can probably just restart and stop our containers, delete them and so on, but we cannot actually edit our configuration file. Therefore, I'm always using Podman Compose to manage container configurations in YAML files or anything else. Because the Podman containers extension is nice to see some metrics and start and stop these containers, but you cannot do anything else, right? We cannot change anything here. And it's also not very comfortable to create new containers or manage existing ones. Okay, so because our Nginx proxy manager is now up and running, we should be able to access the web interface of it. So just try, copy the public IP address, and now we need to use the HTTP protocol because it's usually unencrypted on port 81. So when this is the first time you try to log into the Nginx proxy manager, we need to use the admin example.com and the default password is change me. And we also need to change this. So just enter a different email address and also enter a different password. And now we want to add a new proxy host to manage trusted SSL certs. To obtain SSL certs on Nginx Proxy Manager, it's very easy. Just go to SSL certificates, add an SSL certificate, and now we need to use a public domain name, a DNS name that points to the IP address of the Nginx Proxy Manager. And the Let's Encrypt server also needs to connect on port 80 to verify that we actually own our domain. And successfully do the HTTP challenge. So therefore we also need to expose the port 80. So let's add the cockpit domain name on the digitallife.com. I hope this is the DNS name I've used. And I wanna agree to the let's encrypt terms of service. I don't wanna use the DNS channel. By the way, if I've done a video tutorial on this, if you wanna learn more about it in the Nginx proxy manager, just check out the video description. And now it will take a few minutes until our SSL cert is obtained successfully. And you should see now we have a trusted SSL cert. So now we can add a new proxy host here. So add a proxy host and we want to use the cockpit DNS name at the digitallife.com. And now we need to take care because we need to forward the connection to our cockpit project web interface. And what you can do is you shouldn't use the local host IP address here because if you use a local host IP address, it won't connect to the host OS because Nginx Proxy Manager is deployed in an isolated container. So we need to use the public IP address or the internal IP address of this server if you have one. And I'm using the internal IP address of this server because I later want to limit the access only to the internal IP address. And you also should take care that you change this scheme here from HTTP to HTTPS because Cockpit is using HTTPS with self-signed certificates. Also use the forward port 9090. You could also change this later if you want. And then you can block common exploits to add security authentication or access lists. One thing that is also very important because Cockpit requires WebSocket support, you also need to enable this in the proxy host configuration on the Nginx proxy manager. So enable WebSocket support because otherwise it wouldn't work. And you can also set the SSL certificate to our fresh requested one, force SSL, enable HSTS and HTTP2 support, for example, and click on save. So now we should be able to access our cockpit web interface through our NPM reverse proxy. And you can see we are now presented with a web interface, but we have a trusted SSL cert. The connection is secure and this is valid. So what we now want to do is we want to close down the existing connection on our public IP address because we want anyone with a reverse proxy to authenticate to our server and not with a port 9090 anymore. So what you can do is on Cockpit, you can just change the listening address and limit it to a specific IP address, in our case, to the internal IP address that we have used here, right? So to stop Cockpit listening on the public IP address, and if you want to change the port or anything else, just go to the CLI and we need to create a new file. So first we want to create a new folder and we want to call it cockpit socket.d and inside this folder we want to edit a new file that is called listen.conf we need to enter socket listen stream equal and another line listen stream and now we need to enter the 
private IP address. So I will now just copy it from here because I'm lazy, guys. And I also want to enter the port 99. You could also change the port here if you would want to do that. But you also need to take care if you're changing the port here, you also need to adjust it here in the Nginx proxy manager, of course. Then I also want to add this free byte is yes. So this is just recommended by the Cockpit documentation. I've not questioned this and just entered it as it is recommended. Save this file. And now we need to enter two commands here, the sudo systemctl daemon reload and the sudo systemctl restart cockpit dot socket. So this dot socket is important at this point here. And now if we try to access our web interface through our public IP address, you can see it's not working anymore. We have closed down the listening port only to the internal IP address, but because we are using a reverse proxy that forwards our incoming connection on that domain name to the internal IP address, we can still access our web interface through the secured SSL cert. And this is pretty nice. This is the way how you actually protect any containers or any applications with a trusted reverse proxy. So this is pretty nice. And this is how it works for the cockpit project. Okay, guys, so I hope this was interesting to you and you could learn something new. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, of course, if you want to watch more tutorials and content for IT professionals, such as how to manage Linux servers, about DevOps processes, about Docker containerization, and of course, also other stuff like Python and what else I do on this channel here. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I hope I see you soon. Bye bye.